join in, I'll give you a Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off-Road Podcast. I'm Big Z and we're here at live at the Sandsport Super, Sto uh, Super Show here in Orange <laughs> County, California at the uh, Fairgrounds Expo Center. And I'm joined live here in the Rugged Radios Pavilion, which is huge, oh, by man, the way. Oh, man, it's insane. And uh, by the one and only Greg Cottrell. How are you doing? Today? Hey, what's going on, man? I'm the president and founder of Rugged Radios. And I love doing these podcasts and stuff. And thank you for doing these things because just getting out further to our uh, customers, just to be involved in the industry, it's just amazing. Uh, this is, you know, quite the unique show. This is kind of like a place where everybody just shows up all at once <laughs> in crowds around your oh. product, around your team, around everything. I mean, you have, I don't even know how long this is, 1,500 feet long. Oh, yeah. We, we got a giant booth here. We've been here. I've been here to every Sandsport show from the start. Really? I've been here every single year that this show has been going on. So this has been going on for what, 15, 20 years, something oh, like yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And everyone I've been here. So let's talk about that a little bit. The show is, is that old, right? UTVs yep. aren't that old. Yep. This show started with sand rails and buggies Absolutely. and trucks. Like, what did it look like back in those original days? Oh, man, I remember the big sand car days. I remember before the big sand car days, I had a no travel, like a four-inch travel sand car, <laughs> this big sand drag Mazone car that I had. And I used to go race Glamis. I had one of the faster cars out there. And we, we used to have so much fun. And then... I mean, it was it was insane. The big sand car boom came in, long travel suspension. Then the UTVs came in and just took over. Yeah, you know because almost man, oh, like it was overnight. Like oh, it was, it, but, but you know what? It, it was primed to do it because a UTV is an amazing vehicle because it does everything. Right. You can go ripping the dunes. You can go in the rocks. You can go to Moab. You can go anywhere and do everything. Right. Yeah. That, we were talking earlier today. I was in the Evo booth with Jimmy and. And I've talked with Crower and a bunch of other guys that, you know, this is now the de facto platform. Like, if you want to do anything as far as racing, off-road, drag strip, anything like that, like, you have to kind of counter your, your options because you have cars that are, you know, 50 grand to buy and then another 100 grand to develop. And, and uh, you got your team just rolling through here, making sales left and right. Um, but now you can look at a, at a UTV for 15, 20 grand and then, you know, another few thousand in performance and things like that and you can just go do whatever that one thing is you wanted at a quarter of the price well you know and what's so amazing the aftermarket industry is what's driving this industry right because you can go buy a car at any dealership across the country now remember that's really important when you were in the sand rail market everything was custom built for that car right everything was custom built so the thing is this, that the aftermarket industry, you didn't have the aftermarket industry for the different sand rail manufacturers. Right. You had something, you had communication, you had motors, you had transmissions, you had tires, but you were really limited. Right. Okay, once once it was birthed, it was what it was. It, it's what it, what it was. And now the UTV market and driving an incredible aftermarket industry, uh, it, it, it just couldn't be any better. And it can't be any more personal. Like, your car is a representation of who you are. If you're fine with stock, that's kind of who you are. Exactly. If, it, if you're a very flamboyant person and you want everything to be loud and proud, like, your car is going to look like that. Oh, uh, yeah. And, you know, it's funny. I have everything from mild to wild to stock. And, and, it, and it's funny. <laughs> I go through. I got these crazy builds. I mean, my rugged 32. The 32 Ford five-window coupe from American Graffiti that I built on the Razor platform. I got the 41 Willys. I got the Baja Razor. I got the, the Beach Buggy Razor. I got all these cars. And, man, I go out in my stock vehicle and <laughs> have the time of my life. Right. No, they're so capable these days, and especially when we look five years ago, right? Like, these cars, first of all, changed the industry. They came with better suspension, more power than you were used to. And, and that wasn't a capable car, and they're even more capable stock from the factory now with more suspension travel, more clearance, more comfort, cabin comforts, and things like that. It's really amazing where we've come. Well, and it, what's so much fun is for me, I've been in this industry my entire life. I mean, I, I grew up in the motorcycle business. We had the number one Kawasaki dealer. That was 25 years we had the dealership. So I grew up in the motorcycle industry, jet skis, racing jet skis and motorcycles. And I was a high-performance mechanic building motors. Just, man, I just loved so it. So let's talk about that a little bit. When you were, you know, fresh out of high school, Mr. Young, take over the world, Contrail, where, where were you going? Man, it, it was crazy. So where I was going then, we had the kick-ass motorcycle shop. 
I was racing jet skis at the time. I was building jet ski motors. Uh, I was going to Glamis. I was having the time of my life. And I got to tell you, my next step in life was started in the communication industry. So you went pretty young straight into the communications. Oh, I, I did. I, I didn't go to college. I barely graduated high school. It wasn't I wasn't smart. I just knew how to build things. I knew how to make things go fast. And I was a natural. Then we started a communication company. I've been, this is my 30th year. I've been in business 30 years. So you're, years. you're a spring chicken now. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And 30 years now I've been in the communication industry, and I'm the guy who invented all these four-place intercom systems. And I'll never forget when NASCAR brought me in, and I revolutionized NASCAR. And all the headsets, all the in-car communications, people don't even know my backstory and my history. And, man, I've been doing this a long time, and I just love it. So let's, I, let's let's educate them a little bit. Like you, you went into the communication world and you started where? What were you what were you building and, and selling at that point? Uh, biggest thing I, I first started was aviation. I was doing aviation headsets. I still even today, right now, I have the number one selling aviation headset on Amazon. I sell tens of thousands of headsets in aviation for student pilots. We focus on student it's pilots. It's amazing headset. how many of those small planes there are that don't have those comms. You have to go buy them. Oh, aviation is at an all-time high right now. It's just amazing. And so we do, I mean, thousands of aviation headsets, and we don't do any marketing behind it. Right. I do fire truck intercom systems, fire truck headsets. I do police officer earpieces. You know, it's funny. If people don't even know the other sides of the business that we do, even industrial and agriculture. Of course, my number one love is off-road. Right. You know, so, so you have police departments and counties working with you on their full communication, car to cars and all that. You have private sector agriculture, things like that. Oh, yeah. I, I remember Mount Monsanto. I used to go through and I, I still do all the three and five row seating machines. So for agriculture, I do seating machine intercom systems. And that's when I developed all these intercom systems back in the 90s. And man, I just it's amazing to see where it's where it's come and where it's gone. I just can't even believe the legacy that I've built over this. And now, rugged, we're at, an, I mean, just at such a pinnacle in our career of uh, communications that we built a brand new complex that's just unbelievable. We got a great team of people. We just couldn't be happier. Yeah, so, I mean, you, you've really developed over the years. So you started with probably, I would assume, just the, the basic VHF, UHF handheld stuff, and then you moved into the comms that you were talking about. And then, and then where'd you go from there? Well, you know, it's funny that I, I built all the communication equipment. I, was, I, was, I remember Vertex Radios, when Vertex was around, I was the number one dealer for Vertex Radios. I sold tens of thousands of them. And Motorola bought Vertex, and they just bought it to cycle it down and run it out. Yeah. And that's when I decided, hey, you know what? I was going to get into radio manufacturing. And tell you what, I had my ups and downs. I learned a lot. And I got to say now, I cannot even believe the products that we have today. We control all of our manufacturing. I mean, even my plant in Korea, it's my facility. I have a partner that runs my plant in Korea that we build all of our headsets and intercom systems and cables. And I mean, then I got into radio production and oh my God, all of the tooling. I love designing tooling. I'm a, I'm a production nerd, like the logistics and the molds and the, the CNC oh. and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm nerding over that stuff. You, you know what's funny is I used to run, I used to go to Korea just to go back and run the mold machines. And I would work on the assembly line because I revolutionized the assembly line. I used to go through and I was watching how assembly was done. And I used to do pictures with instructions. So before and after pictures, so they knew how to assemble. So we, we didn't have mistakes. We didn't have issues. Everything was the same. And then the mold machine, I'll never forget. I was watching the guy running the mold machine. Then all the ear cups would come over and then they had to be sonic welded together. So then they would go off to the sonic welder and then it's, I'd have a guy sonic welding. And I'm like, well, wait a second. I wheeled over the sonic welder, put it right next to the injection mold machine. So when it popped out of the mold, the mold would come apart, the, the ear cups would come out, and we would immediately put it on the sonic welder. So I had one guy doing that was things. doing two things, and it just streamlined production. And, right. and I'm a production guy. I didn't go to school for this. I just learned it. Yeah. You know, There's some, some people are just born that way. Like They can see things not working or working a certain way like mentally, right, and, and, and diving full in on it. You know what? I, it's it's interesting. I um, you know, my family history. I learned a lot. I I, I must have good genes. My, my my grandfather he invented all the aerial photography equipment that mapped the country. You know, and I mean, I, I come from a line. My dad, in unbelievable and high performance. My dad could make 
anything go fast. <laughs> and, he was the Tim Tool man. Of, oh, uh, man. He could, <laughs> he could build anything, do anything. Back in the 60s when he was doing high-performance motorcycle engines, he would weld up the top of the pistons because he couldn't buy a high-performance piston. He would grind his own cams. He would make his own valves. He'd port them, and he had the best motors in the industry. And, and I just have those genes of learning from, from this. And from a young age, I was building motors. Yeah, I just it, I knew how to make things go fast. Those guys that are that are all in on just I'll get it done, I'll figure it out, I'll learn that that thing and 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 grind it out in the garage or whatever it is. You know, it's kind of a lost art with these these days where people don't have tools in their garage anymore, right? Oh, exactly. And you know what? You know, the one thing about rugged is is I'm the driving force behind the company, but this thing it's so much fun. I know how to ma I know how to build microphones, how to build circuit boards, how to build, like, I revolutionized the microphone that we use, and I, and I changed the diaphragms in it so it was more resistant to noise, and I know how to do all these things. So I am total backup. We're not a company that we just buy parts, put them together, and sell them. That's not who we are. We actually hands-on manufacture, and that's what's so exciting about what we do, and I'm backup for my entire company. Yeah, I've got guys, the Steve and Steve, that are head of product development now that develop all of our radios, but what's so much fun is I'm bringing these guys up, teaching them how production works and how to design and do all these things, but I'm backup for them. Right, and, and, and I think that is proven in kind of what the transition has been in this new facility and, and what you're investing in. It's not just a bigger box that you're in, right? You're investing in the workspace and their work environment and their tools that they have and the, the space they get and, and all Absolutely. of it. You know what, I'm investing in my employees. Thing is this, I, I'm not the guy that's about the last dollar. I mean, I, I'm thankful, rugged, successful, it's done well for my family, but this is the thing. It's not just my family. It's my entire family. It's our customer families. It's everybody. I'm not about the last dollar. I give back every chance I can. I do uh, Cancer Society of Havasu, Mission Hope Cancer Center, Friends of Oceano Dunes. I just, man, I, I, I'm so lucky to have a vehicle that I can do all these things. But my rugged family, my employees, I take care of them. The new facility, when you walk in, everybody's got a sit-stand desk, uh, anti-fatigue mat ergonomic chair, this big giant curved screen. I did everything to make their life better because, hey, when you got to work for a company eight to 10 hours a day, I want a nice place to come in and work. Right. And a great break room. And, you know, we, we load up full of snacks and we do all this stuff because I value my employees. And, you know, I'm every day there working with them. And it's funny, this week has been crazy busy. So I've been back in shipping and I just walk back and start helping the shipping guys. And they're like, hey, it's okay. We got it. No, I, I love doing this. What can I do? I'm filling tape machines. I'm, I'm getting this. I'm emptying their trash cans. I'm like, well, you don't have to do this. I said, no, man, I got to take care of you. I, I think it's funny, though, because as you know, I have kind of a brain like yours where I want to help and help people succeed and get better. But at the same time, my brain's thinking, it's like, I'm learning while I'm doing this. I'm like, oh, I see yeah. how I can optimize that while I'm over well, here. you know, it's so funny. <laughs> then I start calling out, okay, I need a pen container here. I need this. And, <laughs> and I'm moving stuff around. And they're like, yeah, I'm, making your, I'm going to make it easier for you. Yeah. No, it, it, that, that's a true testament of someone that's willing to be hands-on with their employees and, and something that, you know, in some of the past careers I've had, you, know, like, you miss that. You, the guys get lost in corporate, right? Like, one thing I've noticed about the Rugged family is that everyone's pretty close and willing to have an open door policy and, and able to, to communicate fairly well. You know, uh, uh, that's the, the biggest thing. I mean, the corporate structures, I never want to be corporate structures. I'm, Rugged's turned into a big business. It's, yeah. it's turned into a very successful big business. And, uh, but you know what the thing is this? I'm still a family-run company. Started my garage. I have a plaque above my, my now pantry of where I started. And, man, those days, I remember digging deep when I didn't ha make any money and I had to struggle. And I, I made every phone call I could to sell an item, drove to anybody who would buy a radio or buy an earpiece or buy a headset. I mean, I did everything I could to put food on the table for my family. And it's so great to see what it's grown into. But that's the thing. I'm involved. I'm there. I saw a lot of people with businesses that were successful. And they said, just hire managers and, and go off travel and do your thing. And I'm like, I like to work. What I like doing. This is what I love doing. And you know what? It builds that. I let my employees take vacations before I take one myself. Hey, I haven't taken a vacation in a long time. And you know what? Yes, it's taken a toll on my family, but then my son works with me now. He, and he, now he sees why. 
and now he's seeing, and my wife is just so great with everything. And, and I mean, it, it's heroes. just amazing. <laughs> the wives. Yeah, and I mean, the thing is this, so, so you know, at the company-wide, man, it's just great. I have a great team of people around me, and I empower everybody to make decisions and do things. And we just don't have that corporate structure. We have a family structure, even though we're a big business. Yeah, the last time I was talking with Steve, you know, we were talking about the transition and the move and, and all the stuff that was going on with the building and everything like that. And, you know, he was talking about, like, you know, they were free to say, hey, you're getting a little bit overloaded. Let's take this off your plate and move forward because we are, we're all open and honest. We can see and we care and, and all that. And they're able to just kind of pass the load around and figure out what's going to work the best and get it done. Absolutely. I mean, you know what the thing is this? It, it's so funny. My team now come, will walk up and say, hey, Greg, I got it. And you know what? It's just like, I know they got it. Right. You know, that's what's so amazing. Like, th that's the thing. I tell every business owner, empower your team. Yeah. You got to empower them to make a decision. Because you know what? If you micromanage them and, and, trust you're, them. and you're over the top of them every second, guess what? When the time comes and they need to spread the rings and be on their own, they're not going to be able to do it. Right. And so, or they're going to be scared to. They're going to be scared to. Or a situation's going to come up and they'll say, well, I'll have to call somebody. I'll have to, you know, talk it over, have a meeting, whatever else. No. Situation comes up, handle it. Yeah. Just like my salespeople. If customer has an issue, you know, no matter what, we can't be perfect in every level. So if somebody has an issue or problem, take care of them. Right. We're okay. all about the customer. We're all about the experience with Rugged. You know, sometimes we can take a wrong and turn it into a great thing to, that that customer is telling all of his friends, you know what, I had a product that broke. Something happened to it. But, man, they took care of it. Right. And, and I think that this is a testament to that concept, right? Like, you couldn't just be a company and buy this hallway and expect to have it filled with all these people willing to, to look at your product, talk to your people, buy the product without having that representation. Yeah. I mean, I was just at a, an event in Takeover in Oklahoma, and one of your ambassadors were out, and they found a problem with one of the installs on the, on the car, and they were like working all night, all day the next day, to make sure it was right, yeah. and, and represent the same, the same motto that we're seeing here with these employees. Yep, absolutely. Our, our, our ethics that we push through the company is we work hard. We're 100% to be our best, take care of your customer, do whatever it takes. And I think that, that you know, people miss that idea that, one, we're working with a company here that, that invests back in the community, and, and that's a huge deal. But secondly, they invest back in you when you need them. Like, you're going to come back, you're going to shake their hand, but if you have a problem, a concern, a friction point, they're going to find the solution for you and make sure that you're at the, leaving at least with a solution or an answer or a, or a product or whatever. Absolutely. I mean, and that's what's so exciting. My, my team is awesome. I just tell everybody, give them a call. You know, uh, from from the from the right as you answer the phone, and you know what the thing is, this it's rare that a company answers the phone anymore. That's what's so crazy about our world that we're in. Most companies want to push you to a website, have you order. They don't want to answer the phone if you have any questions, and if you have a problem, you're going to have to try and find it on the website. They don't put their phone number; they hide it. Then when you call, press one for this, two for that. Oh, leave a message here or wait on hold. I was with a company, a well-known company, and I had an issue with a product that I bought. I was like 45 minutes on yeah. hold. And, Not it, uncommon. And, and they didn't answer my question. I'm like, man, this is crappy service. Right. And I went down and told my entire team what happened. And I said, make sure, okay, I want that phone answered within two to three rings. Right. If it's ringing, I want to answer it. If there's a message, call them back as fast as you can. Right. And not you don't have to learn a manual to use the phone tree to get to that point. Like yeah. it needs to be a simple process of yeah. I'm, I'm calling for a reason. I need to I need to talk to someone. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and make it happen. So um, you could, you could say the communication company is good at communication, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That, that that's the funny. I I just love being in business and in this industry. It's amazing. I mean, look at this: the Sandsport Super Show, uh, Costa Mesa, California, 2021. It's happening. It's here. Everybody's smiling. Everybody's having a great time. And I can't thank the promoters enough for doing this because I would not want to be a promoter right now. It's tough. Right. It's really, really tough. But, man, look at the venue. They filled this place. Customers are spending money, having fun, because guess what? Sand season is coming, and, man, it's going to be off the hook this year. Yeah, and especially for you guys, you got new products coming out. 
Um, you, you traditionally had kind of a, uh, a similar product line for many years, uh, and it was tried and true, and people, yep. you, there's, there's probably millions of those things out floating yep. around. Um, and we have now a new investment into the GMRS product line, and uh, even some you know waterproof solutions and oh, things yeah. like that. So what do you, what what do you got going on? You got the oh. new M1 coming out. And so so the new M1, it's insane. Okay, it's it's two and a half years of development. It's our 50 watt race radio, IP67 rated, digital platform has text messaging in it. I mean, I wanted to take things to a whole new level, but then the backbone that it's built under. We're going to have releases for that product. So you're going to be able to update and open up new features. It's Watch an, out, everybody! Over time. Oh man, it, it's not going to be a product that oh you bought it and and you know six months later you're going to have to buy something new. None. This thing is fully upgradable. It'll have no charge upgrades that are built in as we release stuff. Then I took that IP67 platform. We tooled everything about that product, from the knob to the faceplate, big screen that's clear, legible. And that IP67 housing, it's not only waterproof, but it shields everything. It is superior shielding to anything I've ever done in most of the products that are out there. And we're talking shielding, like, like RF shielding, RF not just shielding. water shielding. But it's, it's an actual, the radio interference and the electronic interference that you get from all the wires back there. And hey, a lot of radios use a stamp steel cover over the, the top of the circuitry. We have a big aluminum cover that goes over it, has superior RF shielding to it. So, the, so other products don't interfere with it. It's amazing. But I'm taking that platform and I'm making other products also. Right. GMRS, hey, the future is GMRS. GMRS is unbelievable how fast it's growing. It's such a great platform. It's the future of everything we're doing. What's going to happen eventually is all the race stuff will go professional band, uh, and all the play stuff will all go GMRS. Right. People don't even know. There's over 1,300 GMRS repeaters all over the country. Right. So you can go to an area, and there might be a GMRS repeater up on a mountaintop. So you have a 45, 50-watt GMRS radio that you can talk 40, 50, 60 miles on. Up and over mountains, too. Yeah, up and over mountains, and it's the infrastructure's incredible. So you're going you're gonna to see a transition of things happening uh, very quickly. Now, with those repeaters, uh, uh, so those that are undereducated on the topic of radios, a, re a repeater is a, a publicly funded or a privately funded tower that will take your radio signal and then redigest it and broadcast it back out. And those are all over the place. That's a, it's a system that's evolved over yep. time. And uh, we got some friends showing up over <laughs> hey, here. What's going on, man? Um, and uh, so with the new, the new setup. Hey, Scrape, are you going to be here for a few minutes? Are you are you coming back? Yeah, I'll come back. Sounds good. Okay. So hey, that that's the world famous scrape from Tap Out. <laughs> He's a buddy of mine, the coolest dude on the planet, coming up to say hi. You know, hey, hey and just I'm gonna give him a plug real quick. Okay. Black Widow exhaust, dude. You if you need a muffler, check out Black Widow mufflers. They are insane. They are straight through mufflers that have the best tone and no drone. I, I got to give them a shout out because. They are off the hook. They're in the UTV industry also. Okay, so they're, uh, they're entering the market as well. They're in the market also. But that guy is the coolest dude on the planet and one of the smartest guys. I just, I just love that guy and love his company. Shout out to those guys. So uh, GMRS, when we talk about repeaters, does, does the radio need to be programmed for a repeater setup or does it just automatically work? So I put a bunch of repeater channels programmed in ours already. And you can get RT systems, and you can add the, any other repeater channels to it. It's, it's amazing. RT systems is a program software. Um, but the beauty about uh, that GMRS and the repeaters, like we put the repeater channels in it. Uh, you can go right online and see all the repeaters across the country. Some of them are private ones that you pay for if you want to be part of it to go on the repeater. Uh, a lot of them are free to use. Uh, we've got one in our local area. You come up to Pismo Dunes. Anywhere in the Pismo Beach area, you can use a handheld to talk. So you could be down on the beach, and you can talk to us in our complex a couple miles away in <laughs> town on a handheld radio because you're hitting the repeater anywhere. So you can sit there in your buggy on the beach and be, Greg, 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 you coming, Greg? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just really cool. But the, the GMRS stuff is uh, just remarkable. So the industry's evolving. Right. 
you know, industry's evolving and we're only getting better. And of, of course, our intercom systems keep evolving. They're off the hook. Our 696 plus, you Bluetooth in your music. Uh, I mean, it's just the experience is unbelievable. So now you guys also have digital options that ride on top of the radio, right? The radio frequency and the, it's just transmitting the digital signal that way, right? So digital is changing the world in communications. Because the one thing about digital, so like our RDM DB, it's both analog and digital. Our M1 is analog and digital also. So you can talk on the analog channels or you can talk on digital. Well, when you talk on digital, it doesn't transmit any background noise. It's perfectly clear. There's a DSP running on the actual unit. Exactly. And then when you're in digital, you can use the text messaging side of the radio. So say you can, you know, you can send a text message to blast out to everybody at the Y, turn left. Right. Or tacos. Yeah, or tacos. <laughs> hey, I'm hungry. Stop at Rugged for tacos. Right. Yeah, you, know. you guys got a new taco stand starting Man, up. Man, soon, soon. Equipment's coming in next week. Uh, we're doing. It's called Taco. Tacos and coffee only. Oh. And you know what? The Central Coast. There's no good tacos. <laughs> okay. There is nothing on the Central Coast that's good. So you know what? I'm bringing our favorite shops from Mexico. Those flavors up to the Central Coast. It's going to be off the hook. Small menu. The best coffee. The best tacos. And it's a 1,200 square foot old gas station right in our complex. And man, I you pretty much bought an entire city block almost. Oh man, it's uh, yeah, it was a strawberry field, and uh, <laughs> it was a strawberry field. Don't ever start with a strawberry field, it's okay? <laughs> because I had to put the curbs, the gutters, the uh, the 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 signals in for the the roundabouts and all this stuff that the city wanted. I had to put infrastructure in, <laughs> and uh, but you know what? I wouldn't have changed a thing because we have the most amazing complex. And we have the entire complex, so full fab shop, car museum of all my builds. I was going to say, you're going to have a full front entry area where people can come in and look at stuff. Oh, yeah. So we got a full showroom. It's just killer. I think Steve was talking about the fact that, you know, the R&D side of things is now going to have room to grow and, and spread their wings out, where before you were kind of in these little cubbies and offices. <laughs> so <and. laughs> so R&D, we called it in the cloud. <laughs> because it was this little makeshift office that was the film studio and R&D <laughs> that you kind of had to walk in and back out. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know what? Uh, I, I really took care of everybody. Um, you know, I, I, I made a place that everybody could grow and expand. And it's pretty awesome. I can't wait to go see it. And uh, you haven't had officially had your open house yet, have you? We haven't. Uh, yeah. You know, with everything going on in the world... Um, you know, we want to have the right timing and yeah. do it. And, and, and now what's really hard is we're busy. Right. So I tell everybody, if you're driving through the Central Coast, just stop by. Stop by and say hi. Because you're officially moved in. Oh, like, yeah, we're moved in. You're not in any of the – I mean, you, have, you still have inventory at the other place and stuff like that. But So we moved out. We took two days and moved. It was crazy. But with the facility, I put all new shelving in. We just had to move product. Right. We moved product, we moved in, and we went for it. And then I was going to rent out the other building, I, but then we got so busy that the entire other complex I filled up with product. Right. So now I re-outfitted that old complex with pallet racking and everything, and it's overflow storage for everything because we are full. I, now, this is, this, <clears throat> this is something important that people don't really realize is that and right now a lot of manufacturers, a lot of businesses are spreading their inventory thin across different things, their website, their, their events, whatever. But you have wall-to-wall -wall inventory you know what? and inventory back home. I saw so many things happening with inventory. I bought up parts to build radios for the next couple years. I went through and pre-planned. I saw things coming a year and a half ago, and I started doing production as fast as I could, as much as I could, because I see these companies with huge outages huge problems and now containers are a big issue i went yeah. to my container my my import company that does all my containers and i prepaid all the containers for two years so i have guaranteed com containers every month and that is a lifesaver because now what's happening is all my rates are locked in right because i prepaid <laughs> right. everything you're, you're not getting influx and, and before they were accelerating stuff so high right now i i i just can't even believe what's happening Hold on a second. We'll we'll let them get out. Hey, we, we, we got. Some, I, I know you wanted to be part of part of the program. You can join in. I'll get you. Suzanne, a mic. You, we can we can bring you right in. It's good. <laughs> so so much fun. I mean, even like Suzanne, she's new for us. She's been with us a couple months, and 
she's just awesome. She's just one of us. And I knew for like from day one that she was going to be one of us. So how big are you now? How many employees are you running? Uh, running 46 at Rugged. Uh, we, we have a lot of positions open, so we're hiring more. Um, uh, I have outside reps. I've got probably 28 outside reps now. Uh, so this is the thing uh, about Rugged. We're, we're doing everything that everybody's not. I mean, I have reps that are walking in every single dealership across the country and shaking their hands. I have them walking in, showing them our product. If you have any questions, teaching them how to install, you know, servicing our customers. You know, I'm all, I'm all about getting better. Right. You know, how can I give the customer a better experience? Our retail customer, our dealer customer, our wholesale customer, and our manufacturer. How can I give them a better experience? Right. So we're stepping up our game in every way. And you guys, you know, you invested in a new website. That all went off. And I'm assuming that as a guy that worked in IT and website design for many years, you know, when you can upgrade your platform to something that's more uh, modern, you typically see benefit from that right away. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was a lot of work. But um, you know what? We have an ace in the hole at Rugged. I have a Reggie. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Reggie. And you know what? This guy, Reggie, that uh, I call him our printer, the printer boy. <laughs> hey, if you, if you need toner, you need paper, he's your man to refill it. Right. But you know what? This guy is an IT uh, Superstar. genius. Oh, my gosh. And what we have done with our platform and the backside of our platform, the stuff we've implemented so we can service our customer better. Right. Because you'll notice when you call Rugged, our salesperson knows you. Okay, that's that's really important for me and put notes in it because we don't we, we know when you call, we know what you have and hey, that way you can talk to us and we can say, Well wait a second, no no no, you have this, you don't need that product, you need these things. Right. And that's really important. We're not just a drone calling up that you call somebody that's not knowledgeable. And so we've done a lot of back end work to help our salespeople better service our customer. So you guys have put a lot of time into the, the R&D and these new products and the new manufacturing processes behind all of this. You you have the M1 that's come out. What other types of, I mean, it's not just radios. You make other oh, things yeah. like so, pumpers and all that so other stuff. So right, helmet blower system, the, the Mac 3.2. Oh man, we I spent a lot of time on that recently because this is the thing. I see all the accelerating costs. Before, I did carbon fiber, and I made the bottom half was uh, billet aluminum. But then I decided, I said, listen, I, I came from injection. I, I know injection molding really well. And I know how to do really good injection molding and I, airflow. So I know airflow really well. We designed an all-new 3.2 blower that has increased airflow, and I was able to lower the manufacturing costs. So guess what? We came out with a new low price. So our price used to be Almost 500 bucks for the kit. We're at 270 bucks. Wow! For, for everything. A, for a two-channel. For a two-place that has both hoses, variable speed controller, and the highest flow rating, the highest, the best you can buy in the entire industry. And now we have the best price. Yeah, that's crazy. And that also goes to a four four post too as well. Yeah, we've we've got a four-place one now that works extremely well. That's the stuff I love. And you know what? This, this past two years, I haven't had one price increase. Not one. I, I've absorbed some increases on my end, like metal products and stuff, but I said, listen, I'm not going to do that to, to the consumer right now. Right. I'm, I'm not going to do it. I will take out of my pocket and give to the consumer. So I'm not going to have any price increases. I'm going to work on, I was able to lower manufacturing costs. So when I lower manufacturing costs, guess what? I pass the savings along to the customer. Right. You're taking something that, that was a, a premium product and there, there's a Total valid reason to have that, but the the mass audience doesn't necessarily need a carbon fiber <laughs> yeah. housing for a for a fan. And this is better. Right. It's it's so much better. And you know what the thing is this? I don't want to sell ten of something. I want to sell a thousand of something. I want to make not just a few people happy, but a lot of people happy. And you know what? People have different budgets. Right. People have different budgets. So I do stuff to where I can outfit anybody with a great product to fit their budget. And, and I love that. And, and you know, I love the fact when I can lower a price and give, give the customer a better product at a better price. It just doesn't get any better. Right. So uh, we're looking at, you know, the next season coming around and, and, you know, you have a whole, you talked about the evolution of your radio products and all that stuff. Is there anything that you have coming down the pipe that we can talk about or maybe something we can look forward to? Oh man, th this is what I recommend. 
Go to <laughs> following us on social and, and then keep your eyes out. Go to ruggedradios.com. Sign up on the mailing list. Um, we have some killer new stuff coming. What kind of time frame are we looking for? Uh, very soon. So <laughs> right. very, very soon. There, uh, some of the I'll, I'll tell you right now, some of the, the killer new GMRS platform stuff is coming uh, January 1st. Okay. So first quarter of next year is when we're really hitting it hard. Um, I just had revisions in our new 696 intercom that are unbelievable. They work amazing. We launched the M1. So right now we've really launched some great products in the racing side of things. Oh, man. I have poured on the development on antennas. People don't realize just what you can improve an antenna. So I went over and found the, the best antenna engineer in the world, and I said, teach me. Right. Teach me everything I need to know about an antenna. And I learned, I, I never knew how much was in an antenna. Teach me on the antenna cable. Teach me about loss. Teach me about shielding. Teach me about everything I need to know. So all of our antennas, our cables, are so superior to what we had last year. It's amazing. I love to go to the races, and I see my racers. I'm starting putting new antennas on, and they're like, I've never had this work so good. And I love that kind of stuff. And it's the same price as everything else was. I just learned how to make it better. <laughs> right. But, but that's the fun thing about not just buying something off the shelf and reselling it to a customer. It's fun to actually manufacture it. Right. And to, then... To bring it to life. Yeah, to bring it to life. And I have a concept, and I'm never happy. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm never happy. I always want to be better every second. So I want to, I want to give the customer a better product. Right. You know, and, and that's the thing that's just so exciting. Well, I'm excited to to see some of these new products, and I'm so stoked on the M1 platform for those guys out there racing and everything, and the consumer side of that evolution that's going to happen in the near future, um, and uh, the the ease of use that's going to come along with that. Like, it's not it's not going to be super complicated anymore. It's just going to be plug it in, play, go out and have fun. You know, that that's the thing. I try to make it plug and play. We've really streamlined the radios because radios can be complicated to a point. So we've really, really streamlined everything, and it's only getting better, and it's just ease for the customer. Right. So uh, look forward to it. Follow ruggedradios.com. He has everything listed there by category, by use type, by all the yeah. different things. You can filter it, search it. And, and you know what? If you can't find something or you have a question, please call us. Yep. Or if you're just, I mean, if you have it already, yeah. and, you, and you're getting ready to go into the shop and get that thing installed, it doesn't hurt to call and be like, hey, what should I look out for? What should I, what, what things should I be doing? Yeah, we just launched a bunch of new installation videos that are, I mean, fantastic. Because some of these new cars with active suspensions, there's a lot of RF issues. So we, we're really detailing the things on how to do a proper install. Yeah. And like I was talking to a guy the other day, he was talking about his S&B filter, you know, going wonky whenever he transmitted on his radio. And it's like, there's electronics and all these things that, that play <laughs> off of each other, right? Exactly. And so getting informed when you either are buying or installing is really important yep. to having a good customer experience, right? Exactly. Exactly. So RuggedRadios.com, RuggedRadios on all the social media you have platforms yep. and all that stuff. You can find this handsome face on uh, a Absolutely. lot of the videos and uh, <laughs> Steve will never stop laughing on any of the videos. I so know. <laughs> uh, go give him a rib online, slide into his DMs and give him a jab. Uh, you can find the podcast on Apple, iTunes, uh, Google, Spotify, all the places, um, YouTube if you're watching. Thanks for the like and the subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace.